You can create new neural pathways in your brain until the day you die, which means you're designed to grow, learn new things, evolve at every life stage, and retirement is a huge growth opportunity. In this video, I'm gonna share the five cornerstones of neuroplasticity to help you leverage the power of your brain. I'm Sid Meyer, the founder of Second Wind Movement and a life coach for older adults who are striving to live their ideal, active, healthy, and engaged retirement life. And a huge part of that is positively influencing the wiring and the neural networks happening in your brain. Not only is there a subconscious versus conscious decision making that's happening daily, but the wiring in your brain also feeds your daily micro habits and everyday behavior. There is power in making subtle changes consistently to truly turn your reality into your ideal lifestyle and your retirement years into your best years. So let's hop right into the five cornerstones of neuroplasticity so that you can leverage it right away. Cornerstone number one is forming habits. There's a strong connection between neuroscience and the habit loop. Habits are essentially learned behaviors that become automatic over time, dominantly controlled by your subconscious. The more you repeat a certain behavior, the more ingrained it becomes in your mind. And things like brushing your teeth or commuting your daily route on the same route, after enough repetition, quite literally, your subconscious mind performs these acts for you. Neuroscientists have known for a long time that the brain is malleable. It can change its structure and function in response to your experience. And then in 1999, researchers at MIT discovered the habit loop, a cue, routine, reward, feedback loop that's responsible for forming your habits. There's four steps in a habit loop. Cue, something that triggers the craving. Craving, the urge to act. Response, the behavior itself. And then reward, the emotional pleasure that you get from satisfying your craving. The pleasure or relief you feel adds to the cue's effectiveness, making it even more powerful in triggering the desire the next time, hence the loop. And researchers have been studying the habit loop more closely to better understand how it can be used to form healthy habits, more specifically an unwanted versus a desired habit loop. So how can you leverage this using neuroplasticity? When it comes to unwanted habits, yes, your habit loop frequently operates on autopilot and your not so healthy habits continue because they're deeply paved into your subconscious brain. But because your brain is plastic and malleable, you can also apply these principles to create new neural connections, AKA healthy habits with desired outcomes. It's all about actively consciously repeating a desired action until the pathway is strengthened in your brain and eventually becomes automatic. After the initial hard work of conscious decision making and like your intentional behavior, it goes from conscious to subconscious. Because of course, when you start repeating a behavior, the corresponding neurons start firing together and then it becomes a habit. This is how you create intentional changes in your daily life. Which brings us to cornerstone number two, making choices. If you want to avoid being that boring and or bored person who repeats the same stories, hangs around the same people and places and lives the same events day in and day out like it's Groundhog's Day, it's time to make conscious behavioral choices, which in your brain means traveling the less common pathways, the ones that aren't as deeply entrenched at first, and then letting neuroplasticity work its magic in the direction that you want. More specifically, whenever you're faced with a choice, choose challenging and choose new. You can literally change your brain for the better by choosing a behavior that supports learning new skills, practicing healthy habits, and embracing, rather than avoiding, difficult challenges. And one of the best things you can do to break old unhealthy thought patterns and therefore behaviors is to adopt a growth mindset. A growth mindset is the belief that your skills, talents, and intelligence level can be developed with effort at any age as opposed to the idea that you're simply born with or without a fixed skill, talent, or intelligence level, or even thinking that it's too late for change or that you're too old because you can have a growth mindset at any age. Four critical components of a growth mindset. Number one, seek challenges. Number two, focus on the process rather than the outcome. Number three, accept feedback. Be a learn-it-all, not a know-it-all. And number four, practice mindfulness. 
If you want more details on how to adopt a growth mindset, just check out our resources on that. I'll leave a link in the description below this video. Not only is adopting a growth mindset hugely important for satisfying your cravings of learning and being stimulated, but it's also a big deal when it comes to your overall health and well-being. A study out of Columbia University found that with a growth mindset, your brain engages deeply in electrical activity and is on fire as you process errors and you learn to correct them, which is a stark difference from the brain activity in a fixed mindset where you run away from mistakes and challenges and setbacks. A growth mindset, of course, also leads to increased learning experiences and brain activity. So imagine what happens when you combine the benefits of both lifelong learning and a growth mindset. Your brain health improves, you boost your longevity and your life satisfaction. More specifically, you boost your neuroplasticity and you develop new brain connections. You protect against cognitive decline. You feel physically, emotionally and mentally stronger. You're more fulfilled. You increase your lifespan. You can develop deeper relationships. So here's the gist. Whenever you're faced with a behavioral choice, choose new and choose challenging. A growth mindset propels you to do so more often. Cornerstone number three, diet and nutrition. It's no secret that the foods you eat can have a powerful impact on the health of your entire body and your brain is no different. In fact, the foods you eat can either help to protect your brain from the effects of aging or contribute to the decline of your cognitive abilities. As you age, it's more important than ever to make sure that your diet is filled with foods that keep your brain healthy, which is why it's especially important for older adults to eat a brain healthy diet. Unfortunately, many older adults struggle to get the nutrition they need, but emerging studies prove that inadequate nutrition is a contributing factor to the development of depression, anxiety, cognitive decline, and brain inflammation. Simply put, your gut and your brain are constantly communicating and it impacts your mental health. The good news is eating for your brain health doesn't have to be difficult. Research on nutrition and brain health recommends two diets, the Mediterranean diet and the DASH diet, which stands for Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension. And more recent studies have combined the two into the so-called MIND diet that outlines 10 food categories that you should increase and five that you should avoid. So what you should eat, green leafy vegetables, at least one serving daily, all other vegetables, two or more servings daily, berries, two or more servings per week, nuts, five or more servings per week, olive oil daily, whole grains, fatty fish or seafood, beans, poultry, red wine, a glass per day, but you can skip it of course, and then Here's what you should limit. Butter and margarine, cheese, red meat, fried foods, and refined sugar. These are general things to consider. If you're familiar with our content, you know that I'm a super fan of the magic of micro steps, taking things one tiny step at a time to be as consistent as possible so you don't overwhelm yourself. Either way, we recommend exploring the idea of a neuroscience diet. Cornerstone number four, exercise. When you exercise, you increase the blood and oxygen flowing to your brain, which is a simple and key factor to maintaining both your physical and your brain health. What's more, regular and consistent exercise can reduce the risk of Alzheimer's and vascular dementia. If you need to choose between exercise types, focus on aerobic exercises. Gregory Panza, an exercise physiologist at Hartford Hospital, he led a study that found out of 1145 seniors who were at risk of Alzheimer's disease, those who did only aerobic exercise had three times better cognitive function than those who did a combo of both aerobic and muscle strengthening exercises. And those who didn't do any exercise at all actually experienced a slight cognitive decline. Another study led by neuropsychologist at the University of Washington, Dr. Laura Baker, found that older adults with mild cognitive impairment experience significant improvements in executive functioning after six months of aerobic exercise completed four times a week. All in all, the first way to protect your brain from cognitive decline is to commit to a weekly workout regimen. If you're not at risk of Alzheimer's, then go with one that includes both aerobic and muscle strengthening. 
Research from the University of Pittsburgh found that exercise training increases the size of your hippocampus, which is important because your hippocampus and your cerebellum are the two locations in your brain that researchers found to have the most granule cells, and granule cells have the highest rate of neurogenesis. If you're looking for some aerobic exercise ideas, you can start off slow with mild physical activities like walking, biking, or swimming, and then shoot for two and a half hours of moderate intensity exercise every week, which means more brisk cardio and strength training. Strength training is also important in maintaining your brain health, which you can do even in the form of seated chair exercises. Just two to three strength training exercises every week can cut your risk of Alzheimer's by 50%. Of course, the more you do, the better, but it doesn't matter if it's walking, running, biking, or dancing. Just move. Even 15 minute daily walks help to reserve the shrinking of your brain's outer layer in both healthy seniors and those with mild cognitive impairment. So any type of physical activity can lower your risk of early death, breast and colon cancer, falls, depression, coronary heart disease, stroke, type two diabetes, and high blood pressure. So it's worth the effort. Cornerstone number five is mindfulness. This one is my favorite because it's so underrated and I'm okay with being a super advocate of the buzzword. Mindfulness is a state of active, open attention to the present moment. And it's also been described as the awareness that emerges through paying attention on purpose in the present moment. And while it may not sound like much, it has some really amazing benefits for your physical and emotional well-being and your cognitive health and neuroplasticity. So how does it boost your brain health? Awareness is everything. When you're mindful, you become consciously aware, which is critical for making the right behavioral choices. Remember, it's about choosing new and challenging activities. Practicing mindfulness, being fully present and aware, snaps your brain out of autopilot. Given that you make an average of 35,000 decisions a day, most of them are done with the subconscious part of your brain, the basal ganglia. This is a hugely important concept for awakening your conscious brain and overcoming the lizard brain to make proactive decisions that lead you to new and challenging growth experiences. Landing on a daily mindfulness practice is the linchpin to boosting your neuroplasticity and also achieving the life that you want. We live in a chaotic world where everything and everyone is competing for your attention. Whether your life is action packed or not, there's a lot of subconscious thinking that can hijack your brain. And mindfulness not only helps you find peace and stay in the present moment, but it also gives you the critical clarity that you need for making sound conscious decisions throughout the day. And it literally gives you this physical space and time to put on the brakes before any emotional knee jerk reactions happen which is like an ingrained habit that gets the best of all of us. So there are so many benefits, including making intentional conscious decisions on things like, should I start a morning walk or sleep in? Reach out to a friend or binge watch Netflix. Write in your journal or scroll your device. Research your passion project or keep watching the news. Eat sugar or vegetables. Whatever it is, making mindful micro decisions in your daily life is truly the path to the life that you want. As for practicing mindfulness, it comes in so many formats and the activity that resonates for one person is gonna to be totally different for the next. But some ideas to try on to see what you like best are meditation, yoga, tai chi, breathing exercises, journaling, walking in the woods or nature, taking a hot bath, or even just by taking a few deep breaths throughout the day. Basically, a daily exercise that triggers your parasympathetic nervous system, your rest and digest mode, something that grounds you and centers you. This will change everything for your daily micro decisions. And I just want to put it out there. Meditation works wonders for your brain. It activates your prefrontal cortex, the key part of your brain needed for planning and organization. A study from the University of Pennsylvania followed participants with early cognitive decline for five weeks and found that practicing a combination yoga and meditation technique actually reversed memory loss and reduced anxiety, which are two hallmarks of early Alzheimer's disease. Mindfulness is a hot topic in neuroscience these days because of these amazing benefits for your brain. So the next time you're feeling overwhelmed or stressed out, try to take a few minutes to practice some mindfulness and then see how you feel afterwards. To recap our five cornerstones of neuroplasticity, forming habits and getting in there to leverage that habit loop. 
making choices, choosing challenging and new, being cognizant of your diet and nutrition and aiming for brain healthy foods, exercise, regularly moving on a daily basis and at a minimum including aerobic exercise, mindfulness, awareness, consciousness, clarity, they're everything. Thank you so much for being here and striving to be your best during retirement. We need more people like you to help shift our culture to be better. Please like, share, and subscribe and comment on this video. Every engagement that you make with our content helps us do a better job of creating helpful resources for this super important audience of older adults. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.